Hi, my name is Jasper Wolf. I'm in 11th grade and I'm Mohawk. Um, I really enjoyed this class and I think it really helped me to create more three-dimensional characters and three-dimensional stories in general. Memento Mori by Jasper Wolf. Cast of characters. Theodore, a young 19-year-old British lieutenant from World War I, executed for cowardice. Ruth, a young 16-year-old Mohawk woman from the same time period, killed via shotgun. Setting, mysterious, dark, and foggy river. Everything is pitch dark. The silence is broken by the loud bang of a gun being shot. The lights come up, illuminating an uneasily swaying boat floating aimlessly in a river. Inside the boat are two figures collapsed on the floor. They both wait violently. Ruth is scrabbling to get out of the boat. Hey, what you doing? Get off of me! You're, you're going to get yourself killed. Just give me a moment to shut up! Did you just bite me? Listen, I don't want to hurt you. Just let me talk. Please. You're bleeding. What, what happened? What do you mean? I, I'm not bleeding. I, I think I would notice if I was... Theodore looks down and sees the blood coating his uniform. I... I died. I'm dead. A, a bullet to the heart. No man could have survived that. This... This isn't right. This... Why am I here? God must have saved me. This, this must be my chance of redemption. Oh, thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers and giving me a second chance. I know I am undeserving of such kindness. Please forgive me for my cowardice and defiance of your plan. Amen. And you? I must have been put here to save you, to, to prove to him I am worthy of salvation. Look, I don't... I'm not in need of saving. I, have, I got shot too. Whatever happened, we're in the same boat. Figuratively. <laughs> there has to be a reason for this. God always has a plan. Lieutenant O'Connor. Theodore O'Connor. You? Ruth. It's a pleasure to meet you, Ruth. Before I got here, I... We were in the middle of a battle. Our troop was ordered to charge. The enemies were overtaking us, and... I'm not really sure what happened. I could see what was happening. I could hear the Tommy shouting at me. I could smell the burning of artillery shells, but I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. I couldn't do anything. It was almost as if I was watching the long gone memory. I knew nothing I did would change what was going to happen. I knew the ending already, but that's not. I don't know. I was scared. I was a coward. I abandoned my troops. I was a damn stalker. They held a trial for me for cowardice. The doctor said I was shell-shocked, that I wasn't in the right mind, but I knew that just... I was found guilty for cowardice and the sentence was execution. The last thing I remember was taking a bullet to the heart and then waking up here. What about you? Were you on this boat before me, or...? Same as you. I was shot, then woke up here. Is that all you're going to give me? I can't see the rest being important. Could be. <laughs> We're stranded on a random boat in the middle of a river. We don't even know how far away any form of land is. Hell, if there even any is land. The last thing either of us remember is dying. Anything could happen to us. I the last thing either of us remember is dying. Anything could happen to us. We don't know how much time we have, or the boat could sink, or... I don't know, some giant sea monster could come and eat us. Just... I don't see how the details are of any use other than wasting time we could use to figure out where we are and how we can get out. It could be a clue. I told you what happened to me. I didn't ask for your entire life story. You chose to tell me that. This isn't some tale with a nice little moral at the end resolved by us talking things through. This is real. And are you really going to expect me to trust you when the first thing you did was attack me? As you said before, we can't see the shore. We don't know where we are, and you were being reckless. I'd rather not have the only other person here drowning to death. If you're so bent on getting out of here, then you can jump out again. I won't stop you. Well? You're being petty. And you're being irrational. Well, I guess... 
guess if we're stuck here, we have no choice but to work together. So, does that mean you're going to tell me what happened? I, I ran away. I got pretty far too, but I trespassed. Stole some carrots, not even enough that. They would have noticed, but he'd been watching me. He came out with a shotgun and started chasing me, and I wasn't fast enough. Ruth gestures to the side of her with a tear in her clothes. He didn't even have the courage to finish the job. He just left me there to rot like a diseased animal. I don't even know how long I was on the ground bleeding out, hours maybe. All I remember is how tired I got, how all the energy kept draining from my body. He took my anger from me. He took my humanity away from me. Maybe it was punishment for running away. I guess we're both cowards, huh? Ruth, there's no wound from the gunshot. What? You, you don't have one either, but there's, there's still blood. It doesn't make sense. Well, we were saved. This, this is proof. God saved us. It all makes sense now. We were sent here to overcome our cowardice. Oh, thank Jesus for his sacrifice and that has allowed us redemption. Look, I don't. Something else. What if there's another reason? <laughs> what other reason could there be? What else could have saved us? I don't know. I guess it's not really important. We have two choices, whatever reason there is. We either sit here hoping that someone or something, I suppose, will save us, or one of us gets suddenly enlightened on how to get out of here. Or we get out of the boat and hope that shore is close enough that we don't drown. But there has to be some kind of other option, like Maybe we'll float across something that can be used as paddles, or maybe we find other people who know Do you something. really want to place your bets on the off chance one of those might happen? There's no food here, so if we don't get up soon, we might not have the energy to swim. Then what do we do then? This is our chance to try and save ourselves. This is our best bet. I suppose you're right. <coughs> no better time than now, then. to save me if I drown? I promise. They clamber out of the boat and the lights go down. End of play. Beautiful people of the audience. Jasper Wolf. So uh, Jasper was part of Native Voices and in collaboration with Jiva and the Ganondigan uh, for our Embers Playwrights. It's a young Native Playwright Festival. Um, after several conversations, I believe Jeanette came up with the name Embers. Um, it's that spark of fire and it goes back to um, a lot of our stories about how we got the first fire and during times of removal a lot of our people would carry that ember with them to light fires wherever they were placed. And it was important that Native Voices named this program after that because we want the youth to be the spark that ignites you know, more fires and more stories as we go on. And we were so honored to have Jasper uh, to be part of our first ever Inverse Playwriting Program. So uh, and we're just a pause for Jasper again. So Jasper, um, I'm sure everyone wants to know, what was your inspiration for this piece? Uh, I've taken inspiration from a bunch of places. I've been, I've had these characters in my head that have just been evolving for like two or three years. But I think it's very different. I feel like um, the musical Hades Town really helped me, I guess, um, with just the way that it's told. 
I just I feel like I drew a lot of inspiration from the storytelling from that. It's beautiful work, and I love that we were able to showcase it today, especially with all the talk of of you know the boarding schools that we had earlier, and also playwrights and uh, what is the future of native storytelling. There are two phrases in there that just really get home for me. One is when Ruth is talking about how um, how she got shot and about how they took her humanity away from her. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit about you know what, what made Ruth's story come to terms? Because the first thing, just so you know, when we were doing the process, uh, the first time around, we uh, read only part of your play up until Theodore shares how he got shot. And at that time, Ruth hadn't shared her story yet. And so we were very surprised when we got the final draft and got to see Ruth's story. What inspired Ruth's story? Where did that come from? Um, well, I feel like a lot of the play I centered around like religion and how specifically Christianity has affected a bunch of people differently. And with Theodore, religion's helped him a lot, but I kind of wanted to draw with Ruth how religion and just like white culture has harmed her and has been weaponized against her and how it's been used to strip away her humanity, basically. I think another one of my favorite lines is at the end where, uh, I believe it's a Ruth line again, along the lines of, maybe we're here to save ourselves. Um, I'm just, I, I just love how, you know, how did you get into the minds of these characters? Was it hard? Was it challenging? I don't really, uh, um, I just, I kind of have these characters in my head and I have, I can kind of like think like the characters when I'm writing and so it just kind of comes to me how they react to the scenarios because I'm just like when I'm writing I am them and I know how they respond. I don't know, it's hard to explain. No, I love that though. I love I feel like um, what most people don't talk about writing is a lot of people who aren't writers think that you sit down with the preconceived notion of where the story's gonna go and sometimes the story takes over and leads you. Um, do you feel like you led the story, or did the story lead you? I mean, I feel like the characters led me, because I had a, an idea for Theodore, and I had an idea for Ruth, and then I, and I had a general idea for the story and how they came together, but they just, I don't know, they just came alive and started talking to each other, and that's kind of how I got to the ending, how I wrote the play. I love that so much. Now, what is your process like? Do you just sit down to write? Do you set aside a certain amount of time? Do you only write when inspiration strikes you? What's your process? Um, I try to use a schedule, but um, it never really works out, and then I just end up writing completely out of time from the schedule, and then, like, I start three hours after when I'm supposed to start writing, and then I'll just end up writing for seven hours more than I'm supposed to. So, I know it's... I love that though because that takes you know. Uh, I also try to set a schedule. I never follow through with that schedule because I'm a terrible procrastinator. So I'm always amazed at other people's process. It makes me very happy. Um, when did you know you were a writer? I feel like I've kind of always known. I've always just loved writing. I've loved stories ever since I was. <coughs> I learned how to read and like I learned how to write. And I've always kind of struggled communicating with people. And so I feel like stories are a way that I can express my views and express my thoughts in a way that's like, I feel like I can never do when I'm talking face to face. And you're also uh, talented in other ways, is that correct? <laughs> I, I, I do a lot of things. Um, I kind of dabble in acting, I do photography, I do uh, painting, drawing, a bunch, a bunch of stuff. And you have a movie coming up soon, right? Uh, yeah, one of my friends wrote a short film and I'm going to be acting in it. Right? First of all, I just want to say, I'm, I'm always amazed at how people can have so many different uh, activities going. Because um, I can barely walk and chew gum at the same time. And so to hear that you're a photographer, a painter, an actor, and also, as we can see, a phenomenal playwright, 
it's always very inspiring, and I'm, I'm excited to see your other art forms because if it's even just like a tad bit of what you showcase today, you're a genius, and we're so grateful to have you in the world. Um, how did you How did you hear about this program, and how did you get involved, and do you regret getting involved? <laughs> Especially now that you're on the stage being asked all these questions. Uh, no, I really enjoyed this program. I think, like, I had just woken up from like a five hour long nap after I got home from school, and my mom just like barged into my room. I still have sleep, and she's like, oh my god, Delana's Studi is running this playwriting program. You have to sign up. And I went, okay. And then I think I fell back asleep. And <laughs> First of all, I love that um, that you use my name as a motivating factor. And you're probably like, who the hell is that? <laughs> but I love that, as long as it brought you in And I love that you fell right back to sleep, and then you got up and you did it. Uh, do you want to talk about the process? What was that like for you? Um, I don't know. I I was kind of scared to apply because I felt like I wasn't really native enough to because I'm mixed, and so I don't know. It was. It was kind of hard for me to actually like sit down and do it because the entire time I was deliberating, like, am I really, should I, am I really allowed to do this? But um, I did it, and I'm really thankful that I did. And I think this program really helped me be like, yeah, I am, I am native, and I can really reclaim this, and I am allowed to do this. Yes, you are. And then, <laughs> Sorry, you almost got me to cry, and I don't like to cry unless I'm getting paid, folks. Um, <laughs> but it's, I, and it, I feel like that's a common struggle for a lot of Native folks who are mixed, is not feeling like they are enough. And, you know, there's so much, you know, what you, what you shared in your writing that, you know, resonated with me on a different level. And, and you know, and I've seen your play multiple times. I got to be part of the reading, and then being able to, um, hear it today in context to the symposium of what was discussed, a lot of the things that, um, there are a lot of things that hit harder today because of the deeper conversations we had. And I think that's just the power of you as a playwright. I don't know if you're aware of your genius, uh, and I, I don't mean to embarrass you in public, but I kind of do, because uh, I want you to take up space. I think you deserve to take up space. And I think you deserve to have your voice heard. And I just want to, you know, call that into the room. Uh, and for those of you who don't know how the process went, uh, we had an open application process. You had to uh, submit. I, I can't remember what the questions were. Like, when was? Do you remember what the questions were? I remember one of them that I spent far too much time on. It was like, what does storytelling mean to you? Why is it important? Um, I think the other stuff was just like, basically, like, how old are you? What grade are you in? What tribe are you from? That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you spent too much time on the storytelling one. Why was that? Um, well, I always tend to spend far too much time writing out stuff um, when answering any kind of question. And also, storytelling is really important to me as a thing, and I have very strong opinions on it. And it just, I, I could just rant for so long about just how storytelling is so, such an important thing to human culture and to connection. No, I love that. Thank you. Well, one of the things that we made uh, our applicants, we had nine students uh, who participated. All nine finished, and all nine wrote a short play. So we're very proud of that. But um, we made you, uh, what was it, invest two hours every Saturday for eight weeks. Um, yeah, how was that for you? <laughs> and also it was all on Zoom, so we're in a Zoom room, so it wasn't really hands-on. This is the first time I actually got to meet Jasper in real life, and you're a lot taller than I expected. Um, those are great shoes. Uh, but yes, but you know, because you're used to seeing them in the little Zoom box, right? And it's like, oh, okay, and, you, and we get to see you in your little environment, your bedroom or your living room or, you know, some shared space at your family's home. And so to be able to see you out and about is just very exciting to me. <laughs> Um, and to, I also feel like that's a very part of a very important part of human connection, right? Is is being able to actually breathe in space with people, and so I'm grateful for that. But, uh, and I'm also just want to acknowledge the hard work and time that you put into this, because two hours on a Saturday when you're also a student, 
and doing all these other extracurricular activities, I just want to acknowledge and say thank you for making time for this. And I hope that you, you know, you, you don't regret that either. <laughs> And of course, the thing I asked at the end of everything was, uh, if you were to do this again, would you be interested in doing this again? I'd love to. It was, it was just such a great experience. I really enjoyed it. Because I also believe, I want to find ways to encourage your voice and to make sure that you keep writing and keep fulfilling all your artistic heart's desires. So um, how can we support you? Is there a way we can find you? We can find out about your successes and help you celebrate them? How do we know what's going on in Jasper's life? Do you need to reach out to your mom? <laughs> I mean, I have an Instagram, but I never, for my art, but I never really use, like, any social media, so. Your Instagram? Uh, it's Vampiric Arts, I believe. Okay, I love this name, Vampiric Arts. Are you going to do a vampire thing soon? Um, I don't know, maybe. Okay, I'm curious. Of course, that's going back to the last conversation. It's like, I would love that. Um, and do you have any other like writing things online that you know you think you're gonna put down on paper soon? Um, I definitely want to do more with the characters that I have in the play. I think they have more story that should be told, especially with youth. I really want to bring her native identity more into the thing. I might make it into a full play, or I might make it into a comic. I'm not sure yet. So. I would vote for both. I think you can do. I think it's, I think you can do both and right. And I think that you have an audience here that would be willing to see uh, both the play and read also, you know, the graphic novel. <coughs> so uh, you do know Native Voices. Um, also for the other playwrights in the room, if you are a Native person, we do uh, an open call for scripts every year. So uh, if, you write, if you do write that full length play, you know there's a place you can submit to. Uh, and I guess we, uh, let's see what time it is. Um, does anyone have any questions? Or even just like, Jasper, you're the coolest, and write more stuff. <laughs> yes, over here. Um, I highly um, vote for the visual aspect of it. If you said potentially a comic or a full play, I mean, either way, the story was amazing. But I'd be really curious to see how it comes to life on the page in visual form. Thank you. I just have to say that I looked at the floor the whole time that was going on and I could picture everything in my mind. It was, the language was just so vivid, and the way you wrote, I mean, at first I was looking, but then when I looked away, it just all came to life. So, yeah, I mean, I, could, I wanted it to keep going. I really did. Thank you. Uh, yes, up there. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, I am also mixed and unenrolled, and I'm an actor in Buffalo, and I've also really struggled with whether or not I'm allowed to claim my native identity. And I just wanted to encourage you to keep exploring your voice because the more of us that speak, the more we will feel like we are enough. Thank you. Is there anything you want them to know? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will take you off the hot seat for a bit. Uh, I, I know because of time, we, uh, we have one more play we're going to show you. Oh, 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 I see a hand. Yes. Um, what is the name of the short movie that you're going to be in? Um, it's currently untitled, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, will you be sharing that information on your Instagram? Uh, sure, probably. And that, your Instagram <laughs> is Vampiric Arts? Okay, Vampiric Arts. Um, and that's where you showcase your art, right? And so we can go see all your art there. And hopefully get this, well not all the art, but the art that you choose to share on Vampiric Arts, which is Instagram. And hopefully we'll um, get a taste of the, the short film you're going to be filming. It's, it's congratulations on everything. This is incredible. So we have uh, one more little play we're going to share with you. Uh, and then I believe I'll turn it back over to Rachel. Uh, so this play is, um, we, this, way, this play was chosen because of Jeanette Jemison and uh, the fact that Jeanette had to go to a very long graduation ceremony last night. So this is for you, Jeanette. <coughs> Hi, I'm Amanda Worth and I'm a part of the Tangit Tribe. I really like this class because I thought when they taught us about warm-ups, it really like 
helped me figure out where to go with um, my writing and like the play that I wrote. And I really liked the warm-ups because it taught me how to write the theme, like my location, and it really broke down and helped me break down my character traits of my characters, Rosemary and Georgie. And I was really excited to meet new people all around the world. And one person in the class was also part of my tribe, so I thought that was really cool. And I loved how the teachers were very supportive of my play, and they gave me great notes that helped me um, write my play better. It's in my nature, a one-act play by Orenda Velvet Work. Georgia, reserved and cautious, outdoorsy and tomboyish. Rosemary, carefree, the exact opposite of Georgie, fashionable, always in a sundress and sandals, a dreamer and ambitious. Georgie and Rosemary sit on a dock just outside Bar Harbor Ale House, Ketchikan, Alaska. Reminiscing about graduating high school. This is so beautiful. I love how the water sparkles in the sun. It's the best. Can't get enough of it. <laughs> <coughs> Look! Rosemary points at the family of seals playing in the water. And there's the mama. Uh, no, I think that's actually the papa. <laughs> that seals are known as penny pits and have ears? Uh, no. Guess what the largest sea lion is? I don't know. Um, I guess it's seafood. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on. It's called a stellar. Jeez, you should know this. I mean, you grew up here. Well, I don't. I mean, can you name the top dance companies in the country? Oh, uh, the Rockets. You know, the... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
no, no, I mean, you're the first person I told, or the second, well, really the third after my mom and dad. Oh, your mom must be so excited for you. Uh, will she go with you? Oh, that would be so cool to spend a summer in Boston. Well, no, my mother is, well, I mean, yes, my mom and dad will fly with me at first, help me settle in. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's gonna be so cool. I mean, I get to see the city and see the Boston culture and museums and Harvard, Pop, the Ka and the Ha, the Ha. <laughs> oh, and you get to eat fried clams and go to a Sox game? That would be awesome. Well, yeah, I don't know how much time I'm gonna have for the baseball. What? <laughs> Come on, Fenway in the summer, a Frank or Frank Footer, that's what they call them. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. What? What's with that look for? Do I smell like a dead fish or something? No, no, um, no, you don't, you smell fine, you don't smell at all. Then what is it? What's with the side eye? Well, Georgie, I don't, I don't know, I'm just not gonna do those things. I, I'm going to be at the studio rehearsing, or at Pilates, or, or going to shows. I hear the shows are unbelievable, and I also hear that they have the best Pilates training, and some of the girls are already planning to go to New York City on the weekends. Oh. Sounds fun. Hey, Good for you. Yes. What's going on? I, what happened to us? We never used to fight. Did I do something? I, I don't know. I, I don't even know who I'm talking to anymore. It's like, you're not you. Like, you're someone I don't know. But I'm confused. And what do you mean, Georgie, that I'm not me? Well, I don't know. You're like this, um, snotty fish rag. <laughs> what? A snotty fish rack, really. <coughs> I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. Like what, I I thought that you would be happy for me. I, I am, don't get me wrong, but this is a lot. Like, oh my God, please. Okay, I, what are you getting at? I mean, I don't even know what the salmon you're talking about. Because I am moving to Boston, you are acting like this? Can you please just tell me what I did? Just talk to me. Okay, fine. Ignore me. You know what? I need to do this. I need to. And listen, if it doesn't work out in four years, I mean, heck, I'll just move back here. What? What did you say? Four years? Uh, you just said four years. I thought you were only going for the summer. Can you please tell me when the summer turned into four years? Oh, my. I can't believe you're springing all of this onto me now! Okay, whatever. I have to get back to work. Georgie, wait, can you just stop it? I, I don't need to fight with you. Why are you fighting? Why are you so angry with me? Oh my god, I don't get it. What, am I supposed to just stay here for the rest of my life and rot away? Like work at a bar and marry a fisherman, have a few kids? You are! Oh, what a snot rag you are! I can't believe you anymore. Are you serious? Rosemary, you're so full of yourself. It's a one in a million shot. Come on. Do you actually think you're going to make it as a Native American ballerina? Have you seen yourself? They won't like you, for real. You're just going to embarrass yourself like you always do. I got to stop, stop, stop. I can't believe that you just said that. How could you say that to your friend? You know, I thought, I thought that you believed in me. We were like two peas in a pod, and you just said that to me? In the distance, we see a family of whales come over the water in the blazing, sparkling sun. I'm gonna miss this. Water. <clears throat> sea creatures. I know. 
just amazing out here sitting outside. I won't be the same without you. This place will always be in my heart. You will always be in my heart. Mother Nature is here. <laughs> Let's just enjoy the moment. Come with me. Come to Boston with me. Uh, uh, but, uh, what? How? Uh, why? You can work at the aquarium. Georgie quickly gets up, grabs her apron, ties it around her waist as she walks back towards the door of the bar. Rosemary continues to look out at the sea, watching the whales swim away in the distance. And a play. Thank you so much, Delana, and thank you so much, Jasper.